This video will explain the SqueezeNet architecture. SqueezeNet is a network that was designed to be small in storage size. This resulted in a 50 times fewer parameter model and less than half a megabyte model size. The motivation for smaller convolutional neural networks is that they require less communication across servers during distributed training, less bandwidth to export new models, and it's more feasible to deploy on hardware with limited memory. Distributed training is the most popular way to train deep neural networks, especially uh, when you're training on enormous data sets or usually when you're training enormous models. Even in this case, though, they're going to make the argument for using distributed training even with small models. And the way that distributed training goes, also commonly referred to as distributed synchronous or asynchronous uh, stochastic gradient descent, is that there is a server that holds the model parameters and then it distributes the parameters to the machines to run a stochastic gradient descent training batch update and then it'll send these updates back to the model parameter and you know in this way it distributes the learning between the different uh, machines. So another thing is uh, with things like self-driving cars like Tesla would want to be able to update their computer vision models and then send new models to the car. And if you have a smaller model, it's a quicker uh, communication from server to car. So this is a similar idea too with embedded systems where things like uh, field programmable gate arrays have less than 10 megabytes of on-chip memory. So therefore you can't put your uh, 240 megabyte AlexNet model onto these kinds of devices. So these devices aren't used for uh, training deep neural networks, but they're used for inference, for like making predictions. So uh, you don't need to train them on these devices, it's just about storing them for the applications like, uh, I don't know, like a smart camera and an IoT system. So SqueezeNet achieves AlexNet level image net accuracy with only 0.5 megabytes. And this is done through this high level design strategy. They want to replace the 3x3 filters with 1x1 filters because they have 9 times fewer parameters. They want to decrease the input channels to the 3x3 filters. And they want to downsample late in the network such that they reason the convolutional networks have uh, more semantic information with the spatially larger activation maps. So when you have your feature maps in convolutional networks, they want the height width of each feature map to be larger early in the network. So they explicitly uh, do this with this fire module. And this is the key idea, this is the key uh, layer introduced in the SqueezeNet paper. So what they do is they squeeze the features with this squeeze layer consisting of one by one convolutional layers. And then they expand it with a combination of one by one and three by three filters. So the feature map would be small and then bigger after the, from squeeze to expand. So the fire module is made up of these three parameters, the number of convolutional filters used in the squeeze, and then the expand one by ones and the expand three by three. So in this diagram here, there are three one by one convolutions in the squeeze layer, and then there's four one by ones and four three by threes in the expand, just so you can uh, connect the parameters with the picture shown. So, and then just another uh, like constraint on it is that the squeeze is usually much less than the expand in terms of the number of filters. So another thing that they have to do is they uh, zero pad the input data to the three by three filters so that they have the same uh, height and width between the output size. Because if you remember with a convolution, if you have a 32 by 32 feature map and then you do a three by three convolution over it, you're going to have a 30 by 30 output feature map. So they uh, zero pad the border such that it has the same height width uh, resolution as the one by one filters. And this way they can just uh, concatenate the outputs from all the expand layers along the channel axis or the feature map axis. So the idea that they do too is delayed downsampling. And this is done with max pooling after the first convolution, the fourth and eighth fire module, and then the 10th convolution. So it'll be clear when we see the full architecture diagram. So this is what the full architecture looks. You take in an input image, convolve over it, max pool, and then have these fire modules. And then the uh, one shown in the middle and the one shown on the right, out of the far right, are adding these uh, ResNet or skip connections in the squeeze net. So in the end, these are the squeeze net parameters. And with, uh, so this chart shows the uh, different SE one by one and E three by three parameters and then uh, how the on the far right you see how the pruning 
which what pruning does is it just uh, masks out weights that are you know in between a certain range. So if the weight is like 0 0.02, it would probably be masked out compared to a weight like 2.8, which wouldn't be masked out. And then on the far uh, left side, you can see the output size of the feature maps throughout the processing of the squeeze net. So this result, this is the most interesting result shown in the paper. This shows uh, how SqueezeNet is able, like just a table showing how it's a very small model size compared to previous existing methods. So the top four techniques start from AlexNet and then compress it with either uh, singular value decomposition, network pruning, or the prior state-of-the-art deep compression. And so what they also find is when they take their squeeze net and then use the deep compression technique, which is a combination of uh, pruning, quantization with a, qu with a code book, and then Huffman encoding, they're able to reduce their model all the way down to 0 0.47 megabytes using 6-bit weights, and they don't lose any of their image net accuracy by doing this. So this is a really amazing result, and it's the smallest model uh, for ImageNet classification out there. So these are some of the parameters that they that defines the squeeze net, the fire module layer. Like you have the squeeze ratio and the way that so the way that the S one by one to the eight um, and E one by one and E three by three, how that ratio evolves throughout from fire module one all the way to fire module nine in the network. So they show in this plot is that when the squeeze ratio is 0 0.75 that the accuracy begins to saturate, meaning you wouldn't get a better result with uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, or one. And so it also shows that as you have a higher squeeze ratio, you're gonna use more megabytes in the model. And then on the right is the percentage of three by three filters compared to the one by one in that E one by one to E three by three ratio of the expand component of the fire module. So this is the macro architecture parameters they explore, the use of the uh, ResNet skip connections. So they have the simple bypass, which is what you use when the uh, feature maps match each other on the spatial resolution. And then they also show using a one by one convolution to add more skip connections when the uh, dimensions of the feature maps don't just match each other. So you can't just uh, concatenate it because the dimensionality of the tensors don't match. So thanks for watching this video on SqueezeNet. I think after watching this video, you'll be really interested in another video on Henry AI Labs, which is deep compression, which is the uh, compression technique that was the previous state of the art and can be combined with the manual SqueezeNet design to achieve the half a megabyte AlexNet level image net accuracy. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos.